welcome to Rising. Happy Monday, everyone. We have a fantastic show for you today. Uh, Brianna is off on vacation, but somebody has to be minding the store. So I am here with political commentator Jessica Burbank, who you might recognize from the Young Turks and More Perfect Union, and she'll be filling in for the next few days. So nice to see you, Jessica. Good to be with you, Rami. Big shoes to fill. It's good to be in D.C. Wonderful to have you with us. Well, let's get right into today's top story. The Wall Street Journal has published a bombshell new report on Jeffrey Epstein's private calendar, including previously unseen schedules, emails, and contacts detailing the wide circle of elites who associated with Jeffrey Epstein years after he was convicted of sex crimes in 2008. CIA Director William Burns had three meetings scheduled with Epstein in 2014 when he was Deputy Secretary of State. A CIA spokesperson told the journal that the two men had, quote, no relationship. White House counsel for the Obama administration, Catherine Rumler, had dozens of meetings with Epstein in the years after her White House service and before she became a top lawyer at Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated. She said she regrets ever knowing Epstein. Leon Botstein, the president of Bard College, invited Epstein, who brought a group of young female guests to the campus. He told the journal he was trying to elicit a donation from the disgraced financier. And then there's Noam Chomsky, the famed leftist political activist and professor who was scheduled to fly with Epstein and to have dinner at Epstein's Manhattan townhouse in 2015. He maintains his relationship with Epstein is, quote, no one's business and that they discussed academia. Director Eric Weinstein weighed in on the revelations on Twitter. The central question remains, was Jeffrey Epstein a construct of the intelligence community? Who, as state-sponsored predator, cannot be investigated by news media cooperating with government for reasons of national security? So that is obviously a theory that some people have had, that he's an intelligence um, asset. I mean, on some level, that's not even a theory because he has such pervasive uh, uh, contacts in the intelligence community and just among famous people. But I think some people have wondered whether he was effectively protected for a long time by the very apparatus of the state or something like that. Right. I mean, my take is that rich white guys are going to hang out. Elite mm -hmm. white guys are going to hang out, and they might do weird stuff. And we know Jeffrey Epstein was likely someone who's doing weird stuff. A lot of people, I think, are surprised about Noam Chomsky yes. because they're like, this is our guy. How could he ever do anything immoral? But Noam Chomsky is known for his critique of political systems, his critique of economic systems. And I think we can take someone's ideas in that regard and say, OK, he's made substantive contributions here. But maybe he's not a role model in terms of his personal life and who he keeps company with. He never wanted to be someone who was investigated for his private behaviors. And I think he's made that clear. And I think we can take those two things mm. separately. Uh, and I saw Aaron Mate talking about this on Twitter and saying that, you know, I mean, Chomsky is a, a very old man at this point, um, mm -hmm. and he was actually more curious about the revolutions, the revelations that he was meeting with Ehud Barak. I don't know if I'm saying that right. He was an Israeli mm -hmm. um, leader. Uh, but anyway, I, I wonder how the Wall Street Journal got this information. Additionally, this is really great reporting. I, I think mm -hmm. this is honestly like more detail than we've gotten kind of in the past. Uh, it, people have been really hungering for more Epstein information. You know, why don't we know the full scope of people he met with, the full, his, the full scope of the client list, all of that. Now that this is, you know, information that he was meeting with a lot of people, and, and as I was pointing out, after the initial conviction for, for or the, the initial quasi-incarceration or whatever his circumstance was for the sexual misconduct going back to the aughts. Mm -hmm. So why, you know, what is the excuse? I can understand, I guess, people having an excuse. You know, everybody deserves due process right. you know, before he's brought to justice. But then financial people, the Gates, presidents of colleges still palling around with him in, you know, after he's done serving time for sexual misconduct with a minor. Yeah, I think that's shocking. I think it's shocking that someone like Noam Chomsky would know his history and still show up. Mm -hmm. I think it's shocking that someone like William Burns, uh, who's someone who's been kind of a darling of the elites. We love to take people who are pretty much state's career men and appoint mm -hmm. them to positions. And that happened both on the right and the left, right? George W. Bush and Clinton, Obama and even Biden. Uh, and this is someone who's so entrenched, I think, just in elite culture that these people are going to be in the same rooms, having conversations. Are they power broking? Are they doing business that should be public service and things we have access to? Like, yeah, sure. Should Jeffrey Epstein be involved? Is he getting information he shouldn't be? 
Maybe. And probably. it would be almost impossible to imagine him not. Uh, or you, you can imagine these, these elites, these powerful people he's meeting with. Obviously, it would be insane if they didn't apply pressure to slow down any prosecution of him, right? Yeah. I, I mean, would it, agree. It would seem yeah. like he is, he is so well connected. The, the cur- this is the current head of the CIA. They went back to went back to government work after after all these connections. Yeah, seriously, yeah. and and is still someone who serves with the political establishment. He's not someone who's retired and forgotten about. And I think that's someone. Uh, that makes this story very interesting that someone like this is, is involved. It's not someone who's just an old man on his way out of his career in mm-hmm. academia like Noam Chomsky. There are people that are still very much making decisions on behalf of the public who are caught up in this. Of course, Jeffrey Epstein is going to receive some favorable treatment under the law in the United States. This is what we see time and again uh, when people who are very powerful end up getting in trouble and who have powerful allies. Uh, they're not really in trouble with the law, but the public might look at them as a disgraced figure, but really the consequences of their actions are they get to continue doing what they have been doing. And this Catherine Rumler figure you know, has gone from uh, White House counsel, uh, partnership at a white-collar defense law firm, Goldman Sachs, you know, this is this is kind of hit, you know, doing the greatest hits list of mm-hmm. kind of elite hobnobbing government, corporate, private sector, and back and forth, et cetera. But without Goldman Sachs, Robbie, where would we get our Secretary of the Treasury? We have to get them from somewhere. Uh, That's why Goldman Sachs exists. No, the the terrible revolving door we have between Goldman Sachs, Deloitte, McKinsey, uh, the corporate consulting firms, the the bankers, the way that they just come in and out of government at the highest level should be a concern to everybody. Yeah. 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 So this is very interesting. Um, I I commend the Wall Street Journal uh, for doing this really good reporting. And I hope that there are, you know, more revelations along this line. Obviously, we have the we had the coronation uh, on the other side of, mm-hmm. of the sea in Great Britain, where you know, Prince Andrew was a figure who, you know, brought to disgrace, right. also by the connection to Epstein. I mean, allegations of actual sexual misconduct um, on on his part. So, you know, this is uh, this is one of those stories where you know people, the mainstream media, likes to deride conspiracy theories. This sounds like it would be an insane conspiracy theory. This very well healthy, pervert, sexual abuser who ha- who can get the Clintons and Bill Gates, et cetera, on the phone in seconds, uh, even, even after he is known to be that kind of individual. It sounds mm. crazy. It sounds like that something people would have made up, but it, it's totally true. Yeah, these could have been wealthy guys with stuff in common to talk about. People with elites, they like bringing people with interesting ideas who maybe they'll be able to toy with and have disagreements with, like Noam Chomsky. Maybe that's why he was there, just to facilitate entertaining discussions. But I think what's at the heart of this, and the most surprising part, as you've pointed out twice, is that the Wall Street Journal's reporting on it, that this is good reporting Mm -hmm. from the Wall Street Journal, which, if you look into it one step further— is owned by Rupert Murdoch, and he's getting a lot of attention at the network over the recent firing of Tucker Carlson. Is it a coincidence Hmm. that this huge story is coming out at this time? I'm not sure. Yes, we've been talking about the goings-on at Fox News a lot last week, and we will be talking about it more today in a bit. More rising right after this.